Hi guys, welcome again to our Micro C Pro for Peak Tutorials for Absolute Beginner Series. This is Tutorial 21, DC Motor Speed Control. In the previous tutorial, we learned that you cannot connect a DC motor directly to the pins of the Peak microcontroller. As the motor requires more current and voltage that a microcontroller pins will be able to provide. A pin of a peak microcontroller can supply up to 25 milliamp at usually 5 volt. In the previous tutorial, we learned that there are some interfacing techniques that can be used. We could use an H bridge constructed with four MOSFET transistors, or we can use some motor controller chips like the L293D that we're gonna use in this tutorial. To use this chip is fairly simple as we have learned in the previous tutorial. It can control two motors independently. The first motor can be connected to output 1 and 2 and the second motor to output 3 and 4. The VS is the supply voltage of the motor. Because we are using a 12 volt motor, we're going to connect the VS to 12 volt. The VSS is the supply of the chip itself. In this case, we're going to connect it to 5 volt. The enable bits are used to enable the chip. If we connect the enable one, it's going to enable the first driver because we are connecting the first motor to the first driver. And if we need to connect the second motor, then we'll have to enable the EN2 as well. The IN1 and IN2, these are the control pins of the chip. If you want to rotate the motor in clockwise direction, then we'll have to supply a 1 to IN1 and a 0 to IN2. If you want to reverse the direction, then we're going to supply 0 to IN1 and a 1 to IN2. And if we send zeros to both IN1 and IN2, the motor will stop. The same as well if we supply a 1 to both IN1 and IN2. So basically, that's how you can control this chip. But in real life application, turning a motor in clockwise or anti-clockwise directions or turning it off is not always all that is required. The speed of the rotation has to be controlled as well. As this is a DC motor, by changing the voltage across it will change its speed. If we supply less than 12 volt, then the speed is going to be less. And if we increase the voltage, then the speed is going to increase as well. The simplest method that can come into our mind is to use a variable resistor and connect the motor across this variable resistor by changing the voltage across the resistor. The speed of the motor could be changed in this way. This is the simplest technique, but it's got many disadvantages. The first disadvantage that we can think of as the motor is not a resistive load, it is an inductive load. It needs more power during startup than in running state and it draws more current also when a mechanical load is applied to the motor shaft. So a simple resistor is not going to work. The second problem, if we connect a resistor, it's going to drop excess energy as it. So this will be a huge loss. And lastly, as the motor requires more current, so the resistor with higher power rating are required to drop the excess energy. So this is clear that you cannot use a simple resistor to change the speed of a motor. There are other techniques that can be used. The simplest technique that we're going to discuss in this tutorial is to use the path width modulation signal. The path width modulation, as we have learned in the path width modulation tutorial, is a technique of controlling the amount of power delivered to an electronic load by switching on and off a digital signal. The fraction of the period for which the signal is on to the total period is known as the duty cycle. So by changing this duty cycle of the signal, the amount of energy transferred to the device can be varied. We have modified our circuit diagram a little bit compared to our previous tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to use the peak 45K22, but any peak with at least one analog and one path with modulation channel can be used as well. This peak is to capture, compare and path with modulation. We've got CCP2 and CCP1. In this tutorial, we're going to use the CCP1. So instead of connecting our enable pin directly to 5 volt so that we can have one constant speed, we're going to connect it to our path with modulation 1, which is on pin RC2. You can see this pin can also have the CCP1 function, which is capture, compare, and path with modulation 1. 
A variable resistor is connected to analog channel 0. By changing the resistance of this variable resistor, the duty cycle will be changed as well, which in turn will also change the speed of the motor. Let us go to micro C Pro for peak project and write our code. This is the project that we have created. We are using the peak 18A45K22. The oscillator frequency is 8 MHz. We are using an external oscillator. We have declared two variables, and sun int ADC and long current duty cycle. The first thing we're going to configure port C is digital input output pin. So all the analog functions will be disabled. We're going to do the same for port P. We're going to configure it as digital input output pin. We're going to configure analog channel 0 as input pin. Port C is going to be an output and port P as well. We're going to initialize our path with modulation 1 with 1 kilohertz. Then start our path with modulation. Initialize our analog to digital converter. We're going to turn our motor clockwise. So we're going to send the 1 to in 1. As we have learned from the previous tutorial, if we send the 1 to in 1 and the 0 to in 2, the motor is going to rotate clockwise. If you want to reverse the rotation, then we're going to send the 0 to in 1 and the 1 to in 2. So we're going to send port B1 to turn the motor clockwise. And in our while one loop, the first thing we're going to read, the analog value from our analog channel 0. ADC read equals ADC read. Then we're going to specify the channel to read, in this case channel 0. Then we're going to convert the voltage level to duty cycle from 0 to 255, with 255 being the maximum duty cycle. Then we're going to change our duty cycle path with set duty is going to be equals to our current duty cycle. This value is going to change continuously depending on the red analog value. Then after a short delay, then we're going to start the process again. Then this is going to loop continuously. Let us build our project. Finish successfully. Let us go to our simulation. Run. You can see our motor is rotating at 50% duty cycle. If I turn the potentiometer, the speed of the motor is changing accordingly, increasing the duty cycle to 100%. You can see the motor is rotating at full speed. If I decrease the duty cycle, the speed of the motor is decreasing accordingly until it's rotating really slowly. Let us measure our duty cycle with an oscilloscope that the virtual instrument gonna select an oscilloscope we're gonna connect channel A to our path with modulation output run Let's set our oscilloscope so that we can be able to see properly. Okay. You can see the motor is rotating slowly. I'm going to increase the value of the duty cycle. You can see it increasing. It's more or less 50% and the motor speed is changing as well. I'm going to increase to full speed. The speed is increasing as well. And at 100% duty cycle, the motor is also rotating at full speed. This is basically how you can control the speed of a DC motor with path width modulation. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can receive more tutorials in the future and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you.